All right. So this one we did yesterday, or we, we didn't yesterday, I should say, but this is from yesterday's notes, page seven, if you're following along. Um, but you know, I figured we'd start off with some of these, just kind of get back into the swing of things, then we'll get on to the new stuff, right? Which is temperature and, uh, and rates. All right, so I'm gonna put this off to the side for now. All right, um, let's see, can we see that? Let me move this up a little. There, yeah, it's not, that's not better at all. There we go, it's a little better. All right, so a patient must be weighed prior to surgery um, because if you give him too much, too much anesthesia, he'll die. Uh, a nurse weighs a patient and finds he weighs 205 pounds, uh, but he prefers his weight in kilograms. Maybe he's Canadian. What is the patient's weight in kilograms? <coughs> So, uh, what do we do, right? So this is from our notes yesterday. So let's look back. And as, I, as we said, like these conversion factors between, uh, remember we talked about imperial or US customary and metric, uh, the conversion rates are never good. So one pound in the imperial system is equal to 0.4536 kilograms in the metric. So that's what we'll use. So for this one, so let me just write it down. One pound equals point four, five, three, six, point four, five, three, six kilogram. Right. So uh, that's, that's what we use. That's the information we use. And so I basically I just want to convert pounds to kilograms. So I have 205 pounds and I'm going to use my conversion factor. So I want to get rid of the pounds. I want it in kilograms. <coughs> And so once you put the units in your conversion factor uh, such that they work out the way you want them to, like in this case, my pounds will cancel and I'll get kilograms, then you just fill in the numbers based on whatever the relationship is. So one pound equals that much kilograms. So I'll put one with the pounds and 0. 0.4536 with the kilograms. And that was it, now we're done. Uh, I mean, obviously we're not quite done. Uh, you could compute it. So for instance, if I want an actual answer, I would do 205 pounds times, and then 0.4536. So it's 92.988. Uh, oh, and it wants to the nearest hundredth. So tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So this is um, 92.99 kilogram. Okay. I don't usually tell you how, you, how to round, but uh, it's good to know how to do it. <coughs> Any questions? All right. Oh, we have 17 people now. Let me take another picture so I get you the attendance. All right, I got Tay Jerry. Okay. Right. Uh, questions, questions? I'm moving on. I think there's another one we skipped too. Oh, yeah, we skipped a few. Um, I just have one uh, quick question about the kilogram. Yeah. Um, did. You or did you multiply or divide? I can't remember. Oh, we multiplied. So okay. you, you have 205 pounds and you're multiplying times this fraction. So when you multiply oh. fractions, remember you go across the top and then you divide and you go across the bottom. I see. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that I uh, understood that. Yeah, uh, no worries. Okay. All right. Um, so there we go. Uh, let's see. Do I want to do this one? You have a two liter. Mm, no, I'm not going to do that one. All right. Let's... That's pretty good enough. We did one. Okay. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. So we'll do more in here too, so no worries. So temperature conversion and rates. Uh, and so temperatures, we're going to do a little differently than the way we did the other ones. And you'll see what I mean in a second. But there are three temperatures that are commonly used, right? There's Kelvin. Oops. K-E-L-V-I-N, there's Celsius, and there's Fahrenheit. Uh, Fahrenheit? I think that's how you spell it. Um, and we're not going to talk about Kelvin. We're going to talk about these, these the second two, though. So Kelvin is used in scientific, used in scientific settings. Um, so it's not, it's not something that people use on the regular, like you're not going to uh, go to a country and they're going to be using Kelvin to give you the weather. Um, it's kind of like, you know, yes, yes, uh, Tuesday we were talking about 
units, choosing units that are appropriate for your SIP, your application. So we talked about how you might not know what 60,000 inches is, but if you convert it into miles, it gives it a more, uh, a more immediate, you know, you get a better feel for what that actually is. And it's the same kind of thing here. Like you want to choose units that make, that you're comfortable with or that you can understand. So uh, I also think I mentioned that you don't really know what Celsius is, like is 40 Celsius hot? It is, but you know, it's, if someone said, oh, it's 28 Celsius out, you might not know what to wear until you convert it. And, and it's the same kind of idea. So this is really used in scientific settings. This is used in most of the world. And then we use Fahrenheit, right? And there's nothing wrong with either of them. Um, unlike the metric and the, I mean, they, the Celsius does make a little bit more sense in some regards, but they're both kind of arbitrary. So it's not in this, it's not the same way that metric is to imperial or US customary, where metric is very orderly and the imperial system is very messy. They're basically the same thing. Isn't um, Kelvin like used when calculating like ovens really it hot? Be, it might be. I know it's used for really extreme situations. Like yeah. zero Kelvin is is isn't I don't I'm not I'm I am not i am i am not a professional this, but I think zero Kelvin is like absolute zero, right? Like it's the lack yeah. of it's the lack of movement in atoms. So literally it's a, everything's at a standstill. I don't think you can even get to absolute zero. So um yeah. Kelvin Kelvin has really weird um it uses like you know, that kind of chemistry, biology, maybe yeah, physics. Yeah, I've I've encountered it over the years, but nobody's actually sat down and said this is what you do oh yeah you know. yeah you can also convert to kelvin just as easily as you can convert to celsius and fahrenheit but we just aren't going to do it because you never you're probably never in kelvin. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can look up the formulas on wikipedia it it's uglier but it's basically the same thing anyway so this is these are our relationships between fahrenheit and kelvin and i'm sure you've seen these before um to go from kelvin oh fahrenheit and celsius to go to celsius to fahrenheit use this first one, so this is Celsius to Fahrenheit. I'm just going to abbreviate it Fa because I hate rewriting it. And then this one is Fahrenheit to Celsius. All right. So, uh, and that's it. You basically just plug in uh, your temperature into either one and see what you want to happen. Um, so let's try some. And as I said, th these conversions are a little different. We're not using conversion factors when we convert temperatures. Uh, could you? You probably could, but we're not. We're doing it, I don't know if we could actually. We're doing it with, um, with some equations. Uh, all right, so let's give it a go. So let's try to convert these into the opposite one. So this one, I want to convert into Celsius. So Fahrenheit to Celsius is my second equation here. So I'll take and write that down. So C equals F minus 32 over 1.8. And you'll notice they're just opposites of each other, these formulas. If you know one, you know the other. Uh, and I plug in my F is 43. So I get 43 minus 32 over 1.8. And, and now you, you need a calculator. So if you have this or whatever calculator you like, um, and just be careful when you plug these in, right? Whenever you have something in the top, you really should evaluate it first. So for instance, I'll do 43 minus 32, press enter, and then divide by 1.8, All right? So I get 6.1 repeating. I'll just say one, one, um, And this is uh, degrees Celsius, right? Yeah. Uh, and it, yeah, so as I say, make sure you're computing this properly. So you'll know if I did this, so I, I've seen a, a bunch of people do this mistake, 43 minus 32, and then what they'll do is they'll do divided by 1.8. And the problem with doing this is that the 1.8 is just being is just dividing into the 32. The 43 is kind of hang, hanging over there by himself. Not he's not getting any 1.8 action. So um, this is going to give you a different answer, of course. And so what you need to do if you want to do it all one step is use parentheses. So 43 minus 32, all in parentheses, divided by 1.8. And then that the parentheses distribute the 1.8 kind of action through to both terms, and then you get the right answer. All right, any questions there with just converting Fahrenheit to Celsius? All right, and let's try Celsius to Fahrenheit. Again, I just go back and look, and I have this first equation. So F equals 1.8C plus 32. Right. Simple enough. 
so I'll plug in nine, negative 10. So 1.8 minus 10 plus 32. And then again, little calculator. This one, there's no division, so you don't need to really worry. 1.8 times minus 10 plus 32. 14. 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. Um, and the other thing I should note is that this little circle, if you're not, I'm most everyone, see, if you watch like the Weather Channel or the news or whatever, Channel 4, you'll notice they always, whenever they have degrees, it's always the little circle. It's just the degrees simple. It means 14 degrees Fahrenheit, 6.11 degrees Celsius. That's all. Uh, I don't know why they're called degrees, actually. I don't know. I don't know the history of these too much, <laughs> uh, but that, that's what it is. Any, any issues with that, converting back and forth? All right. All right, so let's try some more. This one's got some words to it. What was the temperature in degrees Celsius? If the evening news reports that the high temperature in Phoenix, Arizona today was 115. <coughs> right? So they just want you to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius, but it's given in like a more practical context. You know, suppose your Canadian cousin is visiting you and you're in Phoenix, Arizona, and you don't have any technology with you to do the conversion for you. Uh, <laughs> so again, we want to go to Celsius or Fahrenheit to Celsius. So I'm going to use this first equation I had. So I'm going to do C equals F minus 32 over 1.8. Sorry about that. There we go. And you just plug in 115 for F. 115 minus 32 over 1.8. And again, handy calculator. 115 minus 32 divided by 1.8. And I get about 46. 0.11. Uh, and, and there you go. And this is degrees. Celsius. So if someone says it's 40 degrees Celsius out, it's really hot out. <laughs> like there was a, was it last year? Mm, I don't remember. There was a heat wave in Europe. It might have been last summer or maybe the summer before. And on the map, it was like 40 and 50 degrees Celsius. And if, if you weren't paying attention to the units, you might say, oh, that's not very warm. But if you were and you realize that 46 is 115, then it's it's really hot. It's like a desert. It is this. I mean, this is a desert. So, um, and you'll note too that in the Celsius scale, negatives aren't really as bad as they seem right away either. Like negative ten is only fourteen degrees, which while cold isn't that cold. It's not negative ten cold like Fahrenheit. So uh, you know, if you're if you're looking at Canadian news channels for some reason and they're telling you it's gonna be negative four out, it's really not that bad. If they're telling you it's like negative seventy, then you have something to worry about. But uh, you know, it, it's the initial, the lower, or the higher, lower, negative, you know what I mean? Like the negative 10, negative 5, not too bad. All right. Anything? Cool. All right. So that's just kind of like a side note. <coughs> um, I do have some examples that use temperature conversions kind of along with other unit conversions. So maybe we'll do some of those at some point. But uh, it's just another kind of unit. So we, we like I could like to try to get different different examples of different units, different conversion sort of methods in there. Right. Anyway, so a blank is a ratio of two quantities. A rate. I'm like, what, the, what does that mean? A rate. <laughs> I'm like a ratio. Uh, yeah, a rate is a ratio of two quantities, and I never leave myself enough space. So, um, uh, and that that's you can think of like slope. Right, so slope is rise over run, uh, and so this is a this is a type of rate. It, it it's uh, you know like yeah. Let's see. Do I have any good examples? Like on the test, there was the dog example, right, where he's growing some number of pounds per year. And on the test, I asked you to find the slope, and if you found it correctly, you said it was sixty pounds per year. Uh, and, and so the units, as I just said, are pounds per year. So that be the, the, the slope of the dog's growth pattern, I guess, uh, is, is a rate, right? And it's just something per something. Something per something. Right, so that's often how they'll be given, like miles per gallon, feet per minute, uh, pounds per year, 
anything of that form is really just a rate. Right, so let's try some. Let's just, I guess, I mean, just work with some for now. Um, suppose your car is able to drive 400 miles on 20 gallons of gas. What is your miles per gallon? What do you think? <laughs> Should I not wear a hat? It's cold. I mean, it's not that cold. It was really cold in my apartment earlier. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> that was uh, a very uh, delayed reaction. I, yeah, so when I close the chat box, it goes up and I don't get a notification right away. And then sometimes I check it and that's when I get it. I notice the only time the chat really pops up is when it's on your phone and it's just constantly. <laughs> hey, it's off today. Um, yeah, so uh, how many miles per gallon do we get? If I go 400 on 20 gallons. Whatever 400 divided by 20 is. Exactly. So it's 400 miles over 20 gallons. It's 20 gallons. Yep. Yeah. And then add zeros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So you get 20 miles per gallon. Because when you divide them, you get 20. Um, also, I'm sorry, uh, some of you have really seem to have really low volume and then others have really high volume. So if, if you say something and I don't hear you, it's I'm not ignoring you. I, I just keep adjusting my volume. And so I, don't know. I was just about to ask that because I literally whoever just talked, I didn't hear them. And I was like, is he talking to somebody or? <laughs> yeah, I, my I think computer has been doing that all day long. When I was in my criminal justice class, he was like, I can't hear you. And I was like, I don't know why. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but you are a little soft. So um, I tried try tuning you up, but then other people, and it, it, it's, it's all good. Don't worry about it. I turned my volume up. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, now I can hear I you. So. That must have been you talking, I'm assuming. Yeah. yeah. It sounds a little better. All right. It sounds good. Um, yeah, and, and so you'll note, when you reduce the 400 and divide it by 20, so again, all, all we did, we, we could just use our calculator. 400 by 20 is 20. So when you simplify the fraction, you still want to write the units like a, like a fraction, like a ratio or a rate. So this is really your rate here. It's like your rate units, I don't know, units of rate. I don't know, is that units of rate? Um, so it's miles per gallon. Uh, and they just stay as a fraction, right? Um, oh, and I guess I should write that too. So you can write this as miles per gallon. And you'll see both. So sometimes in a problem, you'll like here it says miles per gallon. They're asking you for those units. Uh, sometimes you'll just say, what is the miles over the gallons? So it's the same thing. Let's try another. So it costs $12.99, should have a dollar symbol, uh, or $12.29 for six pounds of beef. What is the dollars per pound? And then what is the pound per dollar? All right, so it's, it's two different rates. Uh, and basically what you're doing is you just divide appropriately. So if I want the dollars per pound, then I put my dollars in the top and the pounds in the bottom. So for dollars per pound, again, dollars goes in the top. So I get 12.29 over uh, and then pound. So how many pounds? Six pounds. So I don't know, dollars. And then just like in this one here, uh, where we simplified it, you can simplify it as well. So you can divide out whatever 12.29 is divided by six. And you get about two. So I'll say 2.05 dollars per pound. Okay. And so you can put a dollar sign next to it too. All right. And so make sure you understand what the what that means as well as far as like interpreting it in regards to the problem, right? You have so you're basically what it's saying is 
you're paying $2.05 per pound of meat. That's it. So if you, know, if you had a grocery store, and I think they have another problem in here like this. If you're at a grocery store and you're trying to find what the best value is, you can find the dollars per ounce or pound or gallon or whatever you're buying. Okay. Uh, and then pound per dollar is just exactly the opposite. Pound per dollar. Doesn't most grocery stores give you the uh, dollar per pound? They do, yeah. <clears throat> I think almost all of them. Whenever you buy meat at like a deli in like the packaging, the plastic wrap kind of thing, they almost always have dollar per pound in the thing. Even um, even non-meat items, if you go and look on the on the shelf where the sticker is, oftentimes they'll have like the cost per whatever the unit is, ounce or, it depends on what you're buying. Then that helps you like compare to see what the better value is. Um, in this case, pound per dollar, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's kind of an equivalent unit. I feel like if I were trying to do this, I would look at the dollars per pound. But I guess you could look at this one too and also draw similar conclusions. Um, but it's just the opposite, six pounds or 12.29 dollars. And you just divide it. Um, so I don't know what this one, this is gonna be different. Six divided by 12.29. So I get mm, 0.49 pounds per dollar. All right, and so this one wouldn't have a dollar sign next to it because the, you're basically, the way you read this unit is you're getting half a pound of meat for every dollar you spend. That's all it's saying. Um, whereas in this one, every time you spend two and a half dollars, you're getting one pound of meat, all right? So uh, interpreting them is, is probably one of the harder parts of doing this, just as far as understanding how it relates to the problem. All right, questions? All right. All right. Actually, let's do uh, this bean one down here, and then we'll do the car one. This is the one I was talking about. Uh, so you're buying canned beans at Tops. One brand costs $1.99 for 24 ounces. And another brand costs $1.32 for 18 ounces. Which can is a better value? And so what you want to do is you want to compute the uh, dollars per ounce for each. Or you could alternatively compute uh, the opposite. So like in this problem, we computed both of them. You just need to compute one, and that will tell you what is a better value, essentially. Again, I'll, I'll, this seems to make a little more sense to me. This is probably what I'll compute right off the bat, dollar for pound, but either one will tell you because if you get more pounds per dollar, then it's also a better value. But if you're spending less per dollar or per pound, then it's also a good value. So either, you, as long as you interpret them the correct way, it doesn't matter which way you do it, right? So for this one, let's do uh, dollars per ounce. Compute dollars per ounce for each. Right, so for, I'll say this is A, and I'll say this is B. So for A, again, you just take the cost, $1.99. And it's kind of unnecessary to put dollars there because the dollar symbol it represents dollars, but it makes it look like it has a unit. Uh, over 20 francs. And then you, you plug in your calculator. So... 1.99, oops, 1.99 divided by 24. So you're going to pay about 8 cents, 0 0.08 uh, dollars per ounce. Okay. So you're paying just like under a dime for every ounce of beans for A. And then for B, I'll do the same thing. So I'll do a dollar 32 uh, dollars. Again, it seems unnecessary, but it's okay. Over, what is it, 18? 18 ounces. And again, use divide. So 132 divided by 18. I get about 0 0.07 dollars per ounce. All right, so I'd rather pay, I mean, it doesn't, they're basically the same price, but um, if you're being like a coupon person, like you have coupon, they're crazy coupon people, um, and you want to get the absolute best value for your dollar or your cent, then that brand B 
is a better value because you're only paying point zero, you're paying seven cents per ounce, so better value. All right. Again, though, so this is doing it dollars per ounce. If you wanted to do it ounce per dollar, then what you would do is, is you would want to look for the bigger number because you want the most ounces for your dollar. All right. But it's the same idea. Any, any issues with that? It's kind of cool. It's somewhat practical. Right? All right. So let's kind of move on. There's dogs losing his mind. Um, <clears throat> you can drive a car 500 miles on 20 gallons of gas. All right, how far can it drive on 35 gallons? So what do we need to do? Can't you just find the mile per gallon and then multiply it by 35 gallons? Exactly, so we're gonna use a rate, which is miles per gallon, and we're gonna multiply it by 35 gallons, and that will give us the mileage. So we know that it goes 500 miles on 20 gallons. So uh, the MPG, or the miles per gallon, Per gallon is equal to 500 miles over 20 gallons. And I guess you should note so, like, obviously, this is an approximation, like, it, it will depend if it's highway driving or city driving, but we'll, we'll, we'll say it's close enough. Um, and then I can actually compute this 500 divided by 20. It's not going to be pretty. Oh, it is pretty. I'm a liar. So it's 25. Uh, miles per gallon. Right. Where again, miles per gallon here is the abbreviation that's commonly used for miles per gallon. If you want, you can also do miles over gallons like I did earlier. Um, and then, so we get this many miles per gallon. And so if we want to know how far we can go on 35 gallons, like she said, we just multiply by 35. So we can go uh, 25 times 35. So what is that? 875. That's pretty far. I don't know what he's barking over. <coughs> All right. Um, and so I want to just talk about one more thing here. Um, so this kind of doing this kind of should hopefully make sense, right? Miles per gallon. We almost like you know what that is, right? It's in like every car commercial. Um, if you own a car, you're probably familiar with it. So just multiplying the MPG times the miles is intuitive, but there is also another way to see it using this unit analysis we've been doing. So if I have 50 miles or 500 miles over 20, gal 20 gallons and I multiply it times 35 gallons, right? The gallon units cancel and all I'm left with is miles. So that's another way you can see that multiplying the MPG times some number of gallons will give you the miles. Like it kind of justifies your, your answer because the, the, the units are correct. They're both miles. And that's kind of where it comes from by this canceling of the gallons, gallon units. Right. Awesome. All right. Uh, and how many gallons are needed to drive 87 miles? What do we do here? Divide 87 by 25. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and again, you can also justify that using this unit analysis that we've been doing. So if I do 87, so this is miles times. And so I want gallons, like I want my answer to be in gallons. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll put miles on the bottom. So they cancel, I'll put gallons on the top. And then I just need to know a relationship. And I know that 500 miles is 20 gallons. So 500 miles, 20 gallons. And so the miles will cancel. And there you go. And it's the same as just dividing by 25. So in the end, kind of fit this here. So I get 87 times 20 divided by 500. So it's about three and a half gallons. Right. So um, the it's really as I said before I think when we did another one I forget what problem we we're doing but these basically when you're doing these factors these conversion factors the idea is that you're saying oh you're essentially equating 500 miles equals 20 gallons 
<coughs> like it's kind of neat. Like it's you're setting up this system and you're saying this equals that. And so if that's the case, then I can kind of do whatever I want with that relationship because this is always just multiplying by one. So I can multiply it whichever way I want, assuming the top and the bottom are the same in my system. And when I do that, the thing I'll get out is I can control the units of precisely. So if I want to convert 87 miles to gallons, then I just multiply it by the appropriate units and divide by the appropriate units so that it pops out gallons and it'll be right. It's kind of like magic actually. Right. Any any questions though? Neat. All right. Oh, well, that went tragic. Moving on. I spilled coffee and tea in my computer before several times. I, I can't be trusted. Um, uh, assume that a human heart is capable of beating about two and a half billion times in a lifetime. I guess I need the whole thing. If a person's average heart rate is 72 beats per minute, what is that person's lifespan in the lifespan in years? Can't type. <clears throat> All right. So this one is, is also kind of like the previous one. It's, it's going to use um, things that you might not think of as units, right? So like um, I have 2.8 billion. Billion. And then don't you have to do them? Do you have to go down to days and months? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. That's what I thought. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Um, so I have 2.8 billion beats and I want, I want to convert that into years. And what you need is you need a relationship between beats and some unit of time. And that's what's given to you here. The average, it's 72 beats per minute. So that's the link that links the number of beats we have 2.8 billion and time. And once we're in time, then we can kind of translate that or convert it to whatever units we like in this case years. So that's like the, the outline of the strategy. Uh, but so let's do it. So this one, I want I want minutes. I guess it's minutes, not seconds. So I want it in time. So I'll put minutes in the top and I'll put beats in the bottom. Right? And then it tells me that 72 beats is essentially equal. So one 100. over 72. Yeah. And then the beats cancel. And now I'm in minutes. And now I just need to convert it into years. But at this but this is the heart, this is the like the trick, I think. Once you're here. And you, and you understand how to get here, the rest is somewhat, it's almost, it's like a, it's like routine, you know? So um, let's do it. So I want to go from minutes to hours. So I'm just going to like keep stepping it up. So minutes to hours. So I'll put minutes in the bottom, hours in the top. How many minutes in an hour? 60. Yeah. So 60 in the bottom, one hour. And now I'm in hours and the next kind of step would be days, right? So yeah, I'll put hours in the bottom. Hours in a day. Exactly. One twenty-four. <clears throat> and I'm almost there. And then I just want to go one more up, and that would be days. I guess you could go to weeks, but we don't need to do that. So the next step would be, let's see, one a days in a year. How many days in a year? Uh well someone's not a leap here. Three sixty-five. Does that count? It doesn't matter. Three sixty-five. Right. Uh, and that's it. And now we're in years, right? Because if we look, the minutes cancel, the hours cancel, the days cancel, and theoretically, if we did everything right, our answer should be in years. That's it's, it's again. It look it works like magic. Assuming your your relationships were all the same, it like it, assuming one minute was equal to seventy two beats, and all these were the same, it it will always work. It's it's literally magic. Uh, but now we multiply it through. What is two, what is a billion? Is that 10 to the nine? I think so. 10 to the six, 10 to the six is a million. So 10 to the nine is a billion. Let me check that. Billion. Oh yeah, it's 10 to the nine. All right, let me make double check. <laughs> All right, so, so 2.8 times 10 to the nine. And you can also just write all the zeros in there. <clears throat> but this, that is 2.8 billion. And now what I do is I multiply across the top and then I divide it by everything in the bottom. So there's nothing else in the top, right? It's one, 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 one. So I'm done. Now I divide it and I can do it all at the same time, assuming I use parentheses. So I'll do divide divided by parentheses. And then I have 72, 60, 24. So 72 times 60 
times 24, and then times 365. And what do I get? I get about 74. I'll do, I don't know, I'll 73.99 years. Right, so according to the metric where you do, you have 72 beats in a minute, then if your heart beats 2.8 billion times in a lifetime, you'll live about 74 years, which is pretty decent. Right? Matt, when we go to have our test, are you going to give us the equations? Like yes. For this test, I'll give you all the um, the relations. I'm not going to ask you to memorize okay. units. Yeah. So like, um, I don't where to go. I have like a sheet that has all the units that we need on it. I have a meaning to put it on Blackboard, but we haven't had a chance to use it yet. Oh, wait, here it is. Uh, blah, 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 blah. It looks like this. So you'll be able to use this for the test. And it has a bunch of things on it. Inches, it, we haven't gotten to areas and volumes yet, but it has that. Uh, metric, all this stuff, uh, time, metric to uh, imperial or US customary conversions, weights, everything. So, and it has temperatures on it. Okay, so, our temperature ones aren't the same. They are actually. So like, um, this is, yeah, let me see, where did my things go? They just look different. So, uh, for the Fahrenheit, if you is it nine, just because the one's older? Yeah, it's just different ways of writing it. So nine fifths. I figured. Okay. Nine fifths is one point eight. So uh, this is one point eight times C plus thirty two. It's the same thing, and this one looks much different, right? But so that F minus thirty two is the same, and then if I compute, um, like this is the same as saying F minus thirty two over nine fifths which is also 1.8. So there's alternative ways of writing it. Um, another instructor at JCC gave me this sheet. So that's why- Can you go kinda... back to that other question, the last question? Yeah. I just need to, okay. No worries, sorry. No problem. Yeah. You're good. Any other questions? All right. So we have rates and we have units. And now the question is, how do we convert rates into different rates? And uh, that's this last chunk here, which I cho chopped off the page. So uh, I give you some information. I said uh, one gallon is that many liters. And I tell you that one euro is $1.17. Uh, and USD is just United States dollars. If you, if you run across that. Uh, so uh, that's all we'll need for this one because in this problem I ask you if gas costs two ninety seven a gallon, so two ninety seven uh, for one gallon a gallon. And I don't, it doesn't have to be in Iowa. I don't know why I said Iowa. It seemed very American. Uh, how much is it in euro per liter? So I want to convert United States dollars per gallon into euros per liter. All right, so we have two conversions. And so the way we do it, I'll put dollars here too. And so the way we do it is we basically just convert each unit independently. So what I'm gonna do is I'll first do the dollars into euros. So I'll put dollars in the bottom. Again, I'll pretend the gallons aren't even there. I'll put dollars in the bottom. And again, I want it in euros, so I'll put euros in the top. I don't know if you capitalize euro, but apparently I am. And now the dollars will cancel like I want. And uh, I just need a relationship between the dollar and the euro, but I already gave you that, right? I said one euro is a dollar 17. So one in the top, a dollar 17 in the bottom. And now I'm in euros per gallon. Uh, so now to get rid of the gallons, I'll do the same trick, but the only thing you have to be careful of is the gallons are in the denominator here because it's a rate, right? So when I go and use and write my conversion factor, I'm not gonna put my gallons in the denominator again because then I'll have gallons squared per liter, which is horrible. So I'll put gallons in the top to make sure they cancel and liters in the bottom. 
And again, now I just need some information. I need some numbers to fill in there. And I gave you that as well. I said one gallon is that many liters. So one gallon and then three point whatever, 3.785, that's too many points. But, um, and now you can check that the gallons cancel. And the only units left now are euros per liter, which is what I wanted. Sorry. All right, and now we just multiply through like we've been doing. So this is going to be 2.97, nothing else on the top. And then the bottom, it will be over 117 times that thing, 3.78541. And this is euros per liter. And of course you can, what well, you want to compute this. So you do uh, 297 divided by, and 1.17 times 3. Point, what was it? 78541. And I get, oof, I don't know, that's weird, isn't it? Um, 0.67 euro per liter. Right? It's kind of weird. But the liter, there are almost four liters in a gallon. So it seems really small, but it's just because the gallon is a bigger, bigger amount of, of gas. So you're paying more for it. Because um, the dollar and the euro are almost the same. It's one dollar, one euro equals a dollar 17. So the conversion rate isn't that great, but uh, I, I think the cost of gas in Europe is actually apparently quite wild. So <laughs> I think like it's like, like triple, double or at least, at least double or triple our cost of gas. They also don't drive as much. Anyway, any questions with this one? So this is the general strategy for rates. You basically just treat them independently. I want you convert each in their own on their own kind of conversion factor into whatever the desired end rate is. Right. Let's do another. So a projectile is shot into space at 60 meters per second. So that's our starting rate. Determine its speed in miles per hour. So we have a few things, right? Well, I guess we have two things. Um, first, I have meters instead of miles. So we need to convert that. And then I have seconds instead of hours. So I need to convert that. So again, it's, it's two, kind of a two-step process. Well, even more maybe here. But um, you first start by writing it out, start writing out what you're starting with. So 60. And again, the way you read this per is it's 60 meters per second, it's per one second. If there's no number there, it's implied that it's one. So it's 60 meters over one second. All right, so make sure you read that correctly. That's half the battle, it's just getting it set up correctly. And then once you've done that, you just convert, as I said. And uh, I need that sheet from last time, which has all of our metric to imperial conversions on it. So I, I'm in meters and I want to be in miles. So if I look at my sheet from last time, I said that one foot is equal to that many meters. So using this conversion uh, relationship, I can first go from meters to feet and then feet to miles. Should be good. Let's do that. So again, I'm, I'm completely ignoring the seconds here. I'm pretending it's not even there. I'm just kind of carrying it along. So Again, I'm going to do my meters to feet, so meters in the bottom, feet in the top, so that they cancel. And then you just plug in the appropriate numbers. So I know that one foot is equal to 0 0.3048 meters. Uh, so now I'm in feet, and now converting from feet to miles is, is good, right? You just do, I want feet to go away. I want it in miles, so those disappear. And then there's 5,280 feet in one mile. All right, <laughs> so now I'm in, so if you compute this all out, you'd be in miles per second. But that's still not what I want. I want miles per hour. So I'm gonna keep going. And if this is the cool part about using these conversion factors is you can keep just putting them on at the end until you get to where you wanna be. You know, you don't need to, you don't need to do separate steps. You just keep, it's like a train. Uh, so let's see. So I now want to get seconds into hours. So I'll do the same kind of step I did last time. I'll go seconds to minutes to hours. 
So seconds in the top, minutes in the bottom. There are what, 60 seconds in a minute? And then just one more, I'll put it down here. Just know that it goes at the end. Um, and now let's see, so the seconds cancel. And I want the minutes to cancel and I want it to be in hours. So I wanna put the minutes in the top for this one so that those cancel. And I want hours in the bottom. And then of course there are 60 minutes in one hour. And so now the only units left are miles per hour. And we're good. We just need to compute it all out. So my calculator, let me see if I can fit it. There we go. I get, let's see, in the top I have 60 times one times one times 60 times 60. So 60 times 60 times 60 in the top. And in the bottom, again, make sure you parentheses when you're doing these divisions. Um, in the bottom, I have 1.3048, and then 5280, and then, oops, and then the one doesn't matter, and then the one doesn't matter. So that's it. Enter. About 134.22. One thirty four point two two, and again, this is miles per hour, and so you could always you could write that as miles per hour or just miles per hour, like you'd see anywhere else. Questions? All right, let's try another. So this is determinant speed in kilometers per hour. <coughs> so for this one, you have a couple options. Um, well, I guess you don't have that many options. <laughs> it's given initially in meters per second, so I'll start there. Uh, and we already did most of the work, right? I already said, like all of this stuff here, going from seconds to minutes to hours, that these two terms are gonna be the same. So I can just copy those on. So I have 60 seconds in one minute, and then 60 minutes in one hour. And now you'll note that the seconds cancel, the minutes cancel, and I'm in my meters per hour, right? So that part's identical to what we did up here. This just converts it to hours. The only thing different is the kilometers. And so what you need to remember is that uh, one kilometer equals 1,000 meters. Right. So once you remember that, you can then convert the meters into kilometers. So I'll put the meters in the bottom, the kilometers in the top, because then the meters cancel and I'm good to go. Uh, and then I put the one in the top because one kilometer equals a thousand meters. And that's it. Uh, and now we just kind of fly through that we did before. So let's see, 60 times 60 times a lot of 60s. Uh, and then divided by a thousand. And oh, I should probably do my parentheses. I don't think it matters in this problem, but divided by a thousand. I'm off the screen. There we go. We get 216. So 216 uh, kilometers per hour. Or what is that? Is it K kilometers? KPH? I don't know what that one is. But the answer is 216 kilometers per hour. Any questions? Nothing? All right. So um, that's the end of the notes I posted. Let's see. Is there anything else I want to talk about? Uh, I posted a bunch of more homework. So for the unit stuff, it's called homework four again. It, uh, it's got a good number of problems. As I said, the ones at the end you really can't do. Let's just do one more. I have this lovely sheet of problems. Let's just do one more extra one, extra problem. How about... Dun, dun, dun. Um, yeah. I like this one, let's do this one. So if a horse travels at 40 miles per hour 
All right. Um, how many seconds? Will it take uh, to run six furlongs? <laughs> so this furlong unit is, I think it's exclusively used in horse circles. But um, basically, so note, so one mile equals eight furlongs. I don't know the history of the furlong, but that's, that's what it stands for. Again, I'm almost positive it's just horse related. In any case, let's give it a go. So we have a few things, right? Basically, the speed of the horse is in miles per hour. And I want to know how long it takes him to run six furlongs. So uh, you have two options. You could either get this miles per hour in furlongs per hour, which is a great, you, you know, all cars should be in furlongs per mile, per hour. Um, or I think with what I'll do, <clears throat> I'll get the furlongs into miles, right? And then I'll just work on it from there. Does that make sense? So basically the problem is we need to make all of our units compatible. So I'll, I'll convert this six furlongs into miles. So six furlongs. And so I want the furlongs to go away because they are a dead unit. And I want it in miles. And then you just plug in whatever the relationship is. And so I, I gave you that one mile is eight furlongs. So one mile is eight furlongs. So it's not very long, actually. It's only six eighths of a mile, right? Because the furlongs cancel. And it's just six times one over eight. And you can plug that in your calculator, but you don't really have to. Um, so it, basically, the question is now how long going 40 miles an hour does it take him to go six eighths of a mile? And the answer is it's not going to be very long. So <clears throat> what we'll do next is I'll do, I'll still take six eighths of a mile. And this is just like the other one we did. I forget what it was, but we ended up dividing by the miles per gallon, right? It's going to be the same idea. So, uh, and I'll, I want to convert this mileage into a time. So I know that I am going 40 miles per hour. So what I can do is I can use this relationship. So he's going 40 miles per hour. So every hour he goes 40 miles to get rid of this. So I'll put miles in the bottom, hours in the top. And again, he's going 40 miles per every hour. So 40 miles per hour. And you'll note that the units cancel. And I just get 6 eighths times 1 over 40. And this is just hours. And we can compute that. So this is 6 divided by 8. And then times, I'll just do 1 over 40 to make it look like I wrote. And I get, so this is 0 0.01875 hours, right? And so we, now we have a time. So it takes him like two, two hundredths of a second to go this distance, or two, two hundredths of an hour to go this distance. But if you go and reread read the question, it says how many seconds will it take? And so we just need to convert this hour into seconds. So 0 0.01875 hour. And we're going the opposite direction that we did before now. So hours in the bottom, minutes in the top. So I have, what, 60 minutes in one hour. And then minutes in the bottom, seconds in the top. And again, 60 seconds in one minute. And the hours cancel, the minutes cancel. And I'm left with hours. And let's see what we get. So it's this ugly decimal. Let me see if I can fit this somehow. I don't know if that's going to work. There we go. So it's going to be this point zero one eight seven five. Oops. 1875 times 60 times 60. So 67.5 seconds. Okay. That's how long it takes. So again, let me just sketch out what we did. So we had the problem. <coughs> the first step is I wanted to, I got rid of the furlongs just all together. I said, I, because everything else was in miles, this is in miles per hour. I don't like furlongs. So I got rid of furlongs and converted that to miles. And then the question you could restate as 
how long did it take him how, how long did it take him to go six eighths of a mile if he's going 40 miles per hour and so i looked at that and using the fact that he's going 40 miles every hour i converted the six eighths of a mile into hours by dividing by essentially dividing by the mph to get this amount of an hour and then i wanted it in seconds and so i multiplied it by 60 by 60 to essentially get it to 67.5 Okay. And again, the way you're doing all this is just purely based on the units. So the units are guiding you. You're putting the numbers wherever they fit based on the units. So um, it makes your life kind of easy, actually, the units. Because you, you, know, you want the units to go a certain way, so you structure them that way, and then the rest falls into place. Any questions? Cool. So again, some of your homework like this. Um, I don't know if they evolved for longs, but look okay. at you. All right, so I will talk to you Tuesday. Um, when was the homework due? Oh, it's due Friday, a week from tomorrow. This Friday or next Friday? Oh, next, a week from tomorrow, yeah. So next Friday. By then, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, it glitched when you said a week. <laughs> yeah, we should have, uh, by then we should have everything covered easily. So, yep. You can start it though. The beginning is all stuff we've covered thus far. All right. Any other questions? We don't have class Tuesday. Oh, because of Columbus, uh, the, the holiday. Yeah, sorry. I'll see you whenever we have next class, Thursday then. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, whenever we have class next, I'll see you. Wait, so we'll have, we'll cover everything and then we'll have the homework assignment due the next day? That's a valid point. I will move it. It'll be due, we'll have it due Monday, maybe, the next Monday. Yeah, I'll get, we'll, we'll, we'll start the homework. I'll move it to the next Monday then. What is that? Let me see, let me put my calendar. Uh, so let's see, currently it's the 16th. So let's move it, we'll move it to Tuesday, the 20th. How about that? 10, 20, homework four. That gives, that should give you enough time since we'll, I forgot we did have class. Thanks for, uh, thank you for the heads up. Any other questions? All right, so I'll see you whenever, we see, whenever I see you. <laughs> have a nice weekend, uh, good luck, uh, and yeah.